fabs and besties? Today, we are gonna make some shoes out of paper. You know, miniature shoes for our dolls. We have no pattern here. We're just gonna make it up as we go. Well, I am gonna use a Barbie shoe for a starting point. Let's start by tracing the bottom of a Barbie sneaker onto cardstock. This is gonna be a pattern, so I'm gonna just write the number one on it because this is the first part of our shoe that we're making. Cut it out. Let's move to the other side of our paper and trace it again because this is just our pattern. We will need two shoes, so I flip it over and trace one more time. Now let's make the front of the shoe with the tongue included. And we're gonna need that to like round a little bit, bow. So I'm gonna trace just the front of the shoe again, but then I'm gonna move it over and trace it again. And we'll just kind of even that out there. Spend a little time rounding it off. Erase whatever we don't need. Then sketch out the tongue of the shoe. It should be about there. We're gonna just cut this in half to make sure it's even on both sides. But we'll also need like some tabs so we can glue it under the bottom of the shoe. So let's make an allowance for that as well. Let's cut around it. I drew in a few little notches so I will know where the edge of the seam allowance is. Now we're gonna fold this in half on the line, cut it out, and now both sides should be even. We're gonna put the number two on this one, then trace it twice. I am looking at one of Bella's shoes as a guide and I can see that the back is gonna, we can make that all one piece with lots of little layers on top. So let's sketch what I think is the side and then about half of the back. And I'm gonna draw a line going straight down. It's very much like a shoe shape and that's probably the bottom of our shoe right there. And then we'll also need some tabs. Okay. I took a little time to clean up my lines and now we can cut it out just like before. Fold it in half on the line and cut it out. Cut out those little notches, open it up and trace it twice. Oh, and let's label this one pattern number three. Let's take pattern number two and trace it again. Resketch the inner line, then Let's sketch another line on the inside. Only this one has like these little lobes that kind of happen right here. And then go like that. Nope, it's more like that. Then I added a center line to fold and cut. So it's even on both sides. And we'll label this one number four. I'm tracing this one on red cardstock. There were more details on the back of the shoe, so let's take pattern number three and trace it. Let's sketch a line going straight across. Kind of like that. Maybe it's got a, it's got a little curve to it, so we're gonna go down there, then go up. Yeah, fold it in half and cut on the line drawn. I cut off the bottom tabs and trace it onto white. Name the pattern number five. We're gonna need to cut pattern three out of black, so we're gonna trace it onto black cardstock, but we won't need the bottom tabs. We need to make another pattern out of pattern number three, so let's trace it. Sketch like a Y shape. Place pattern number five on top, just to make sure it kind of goes down near the dip. Cut it out, label it six, and trace it on red. Use pattern three again to make a border at one edge. Cut it out, label it seven, and trace two for each shoe on red and I just flipped it over to get the other side. 
I can take the leftover pattern, place pattern five on top, and we're just gonna trace around it. Then sketch a little dome shape, kind of like a half circle or quarter circle. But let's make it a little sharper on this end here. Cut it out, label it eight, and trace two on red. Let's use pattern three to sketch out this last little detail. It's got kind of a weird little shape. Maybe it goes more like this and then like that. Yeah, I'm gonna add a little tail end to it. Actually, let's make it go straight down so we know where it needs to bend. Cut it out and trace four on red, making sure to flip it for two of them. And we will label this number nine. Okay, that was a lot of prep and we don't even know if this shoe is going to work yet. So I guess we better find out. Cut out all the pieces. Let's cut those tabs so we have a whole lot more. And this will make it a little more flexible. Yeah, we have lots of tabs now. Let's bend them. We have two mushroom shapes. Bend them so they curl a little bit. Take the shoe print cut out and we're gonna glue those tabs underneath. This is some tedious gluing here, but using tweezers definitely helps, especially trying to get into those smaller spaces. Then I bend the tongue forward and yeah, that looks like it's okay. Okay, so we're gonna move on and add this red layer right onto the front. The paper is way too thick. See that? It's just way too wide. Now I'm trying to remove it. Oh no. Oh, this is so ruined. Okay, we'll just have to cut that piece out again and try again. I think we need to trim off about that much. Now we can glue it on again. I am making both shoes at once. Let's add this piece. This is the back of the shoe. And I'm just gonna curl it with my fingers a little first. Let's go ahead and glue this back piece on before we attach it to the shoe. And then we can bend it while the glue dries. Then glue the tabs underneath. Ah, it's a little long on the side and I'm covering up some of those details. But if I trim it, it's gonna throw everything off. So I'm just gonna slide the shoe forward a little. Let's add those red squiggly pieces on the sides. The front is still bothering me. I think we need more of a dip right here. So I lightly sketched it with the pencil and we're just gonna go in and try and trim it. Now we can take the little Y shape and we're gonna glue this onto the back, making sure it touches the top corner. Curl the piece from pattern five, and we're gonna glue that onto the back. Ah, it's a little long, so I quickly remove it and trim it. Now, whenever I make adjustments to the pieces of paper, I also have to adjust the pattern. Now let's try it. Yeah, that's better. Add the piece from pattern eight to the very back. Let's add these weird little shapes onto the bottom edge. And all the pieces we cut out have been glued on. Now we do have a few more pieces we need to cut. Trace pattern five onto black paper. And let's sketch a check. Cut it out. I made two and we're just gonna glue these on like that. On leftover red, let's write a little Nike Air. I'm trying to do this neat failing. Okay, we'll try again. Allow the gel pen to dry. Hmm, 
I've had some time to stare at my shoes and I'm not loving the proportions. I was trying to make it work just because I didn't want to recut all this back out, but the front of the shoe really does need to be longer. Once we add laces, we're gonna lose a lot of this toe area. So the only way to fix this is to start over. <laughs> I think we only really need to adjust a few things. Maybe this front part of the shoe and the bottom. So let's trace pattern number one. And I just added a little extra to the front toe. And let's recut that piece right there. I'm making a whole new pattern for it. I cut it without the tabs because I think we can just add those on later. Everything has been cut out and it is no fun to start over, especially since there are so many pieces. But when you're experimenting and trying something new, sometimes it's just a part of the job. And let's take this opportunity to add a few holes onto the front of the shoe. I'm using a pen to just poke little holes in the paper. Then begin assembling just as before. And after an hour or two, we are caught up. Let's cut out our labels and glue them on, lay them down and use a needle to make holes for the laces. I found it a little easier to use my X-Acto knife. However, precision might be off a little. For my shoelaces, I just braided string. Now I wanted to use elastic string, but all I have is white and I kind of needed black. So I considered embroidery floss, but it was too thick. So here we are, braiding our own shoelaces. I fold it in half and then put glue on all of the ends. Well, on the fold and on the ends. While waiting for that to dry, let's do the bottom of the shoes. Trace the bottom on leftover cardstock, cut it out, and repeat about seven more times per shoe. I did eight, and I'm gonna stack and glue them all together. Glue it onto the bottom, cut thin strips of white and red paper, wrap the white around the bottom, followed by a thin line of red. All we have left is to put the laces in the shoes. Cut on the glue to separate the two laces, thread a needle, go through the little holes we made earlier to uh, lace the shoes. Is that it right there? There we go. If your laces are super thick, you might tear the shoe, so you've been warned. Okay, note to self, make sure those holes are lined up as best you can. I end up having to skip a few just to make it make sense. But now our miniature Air Jordan 1s are done. My laces aren't actually long enough to tie them, so I'm just gonna leave them loose. With all the tracing and layering, they came out a lot bigger than our Barbie shoes. But personally, I think Barbie shoes are always a little too small, so. But our dolls can fit them, and you can probably even get away with adding a pair of socks. They are made out of paper, so they're gonna be a little delicate. However, we used a lot of layers, so they're actually pretty sturdy. The areas I'm most concerned about is any pulling around the laces. But not too bad. We just made these with paper, glue, and string. Oh, and a white gel pen. And now I'm curious to find out what other shoes we can make out of paper. Thank you for joining us while we experimented with making shoes out of paper. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at MyFroggyStuff and the Frog Vlog and Bella of MyFroggyStuff. And we will see you next time. 